like to offer a few preliminary remarks on the Within Judaism perspective. Whether we deal with New Testament texts within Judaism or with Jesus-oriented texts from the second or third centuries. More precisely, I have three brief points. <clears throat> Number one, we need to keep the perspectives of the historian and the believer separate. The starting point of any non-normative understanding of religion is self-identification, says Michael Satlow in an article called Defining Judaism <clears throat> in the Journal of the American Academy of Religion. And he says this on the study of contemporary religion, but the same goes for antiquity. And he continues, a quote, for the academic student of religion, any Jewish community or individual that self-identifies as Jewish counts to the same degree as any other, end quote. So adopting the perspective of the historian means that we cannot judge the legitimacy of the claims to Jewishness either by ancient authors or contemporary groups, such as Messianic Jews, for instance. We can only try to understand the Jewish identities of various individuals and groups and attempt to explain why other groups may not accept their claims to Jewishness, as Christine Hayes pointed out at an SBL Paul Within Judaism panel recently. Sometimes, of course, ancient authors are not clear about their self-identification, leaving us to work only with hints in the text. Second point. When we place a given text within Judaism, we should, be we should clearly state what our goal is in doing so. As historians, we place Paul, Matthew, or John, or whatever text we're working with, within Judaism, with the goal of better understanding first century Judaism, as well as these individual texts. We should also state ex explicitly that within Judaism here refers to within first or second century Judaism, and highlight that placing these texts within ancient Judaism does not have any implications for contemporary Jews and Christians, that is, for a normative understanding of Judaism and Christianity. Through their reception history, Paul, Matthew, and John became Christian texts. They originated within first and second century Judaism, but are naturally not part of contemporary Judaism. Which brings me to the third and final point. We should be specific about the stage of a text's history to which we attach the label within Judaism and differentiate between a text's origin and its reception history. A text may have originated within Judaism but subsequently been interpreted from a position outside of Judaism. And in such cases, we must make sure locating it within Judaism does not become an excuse for disregarding its later history. Thank you.